Hello, sportsmen. Hey, I want to thank you for supporting public television with your pledge. You know, it was years ago, even before I started on public TV, there was a show called This Old House. It became very popular. We've sort of incorporated that idea into practical sportsmen in the past year, and it's been a big hit. People like you have, have wanted to know how we built this reloading bench that anybody could build at home inexpensively. The practical look of the practical sportsman is what we're going to be developing in the years ahead. I hope you continue supporting the show and supporting public television. And now, let's get on with the video. Check it out against the plans. I'll be back at the end of this series of lessons on how to put this together with some ideas on how to improve this even more. Every sportsman needs a place to work on outdoor gear. You know, do things like cleaning guns or repairing fishing tackle, maybe reloading shells. Now, a tabletop is the standard workbench for many of us. I mean, I've used kitchen tables and old desks for years. But when you work like this, everything is temporary. Supplies are in boxes. Uh, you drop things on the floors. Tools and, and materials have to be stored someplace else, and sometimes they get misplaced in the process. The answer is to build a sportsman's workbench where you have everything you need at your fingertips. Now, I found a guy who built a great one. His name is John DePoit. He lives in Houghton, way up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. He's a carpenter by trade, and when he was remodeling his house, he built his workbench in a closet. So you've done a lot of remodeling in this, what is actually an older house? Yeah, it's one of the oldest homes in Houghton. I remodeled this whole house. In fact, what you had initially filmed the dining room, that used to be outside. Huh. That arch there was a, was a window right there. Now it says the office. What do we have well, here? It is my office, but it's also my den of collectibles. And there's many collectibles in here. Whoa. There's shotgun shell boxes with shells in it. There's plates and bottles <laughs> and insulators from utility poles. You name it. This here is itself is an antique. It was made in 1910. The chair is made about the same time. That kerosene lamp still works. We use it when we have power outages here. And it still does happen up here. What about some of these shells? You have a, a box of shells right here. This, this box here is Winchester brass shot shells. They were they're double lot buck. And these are made more than 100 years ago. And there's a box of 20 in there. That's brass? These are all, all brass. brass. Huh. So from there it went down to uh, the base being brass and the rest of it being cardboard. Cardboard, right. Cardboard and now plastic. Hmm. Huh. Plastic, the weather doesn't affect plastic at all. Okay, now, the interesting thing to me is your reloading room, which is the ultimate sportsman's workshop. Actually, we're looking at the door right here. This is a door to the, the old, well, it was a pantry at one time, and our, when I remodeled the kitchen, I made this into my reloading room. Well, let's see it. Uh, well, this is rather incredible for a small pantry. I mean, this is uh, about the size of a small coat closet. And all these inventions here, people probably can't really appreciate uh, when they look at them. How about giving me a little tour here of what you have? This is a reloader, a progressive reloader for, for brass for a revolver. John DePoit uses his closet workbench for reloading metallic cartridges, cleaning guns, reloading shotgun shells for his son, Matt. At 14 years old, Matt DePoit was a junior trap shooting champ. His natural talent was obvious, and his dad drove him to trap shoots all over the Midwest. Going through thousands and thousands of rounds every season, John set up a workbench where reloading was easy and where all his equipment and supplies were at his fingertips. This is just one machine you have for your, your 12 gauge shells. And I notice right over here, you have two other shot shell reloaders. Right. They are not anchored down here. Right. How do you change them? These are all movable. I just take these wing nuts off. Can you do that? Can you do that real sure. quick? Sure. I can move this over and put another one in its place. This happens to be a 10 gauge reloader. This is a single stage, meaning you have to move the shelf from station to station mm -hmm. as opposed to this is a progressive where they move by themselves. But that's how you set it up to switch machines. Right. Now this is all set to, to reload uh, 10 gauge, three and a half inch hulls. Okay, well turn around here and tell me, as you sit there in your little uh, your little cubicle, your little sportsman's workbench, 
Um, you have what? Two, a sizer and a reloader for, for brass shells. Right, for metallic, right. And then you have three shotgun shell reloaders in here? Correct. And you have all the components you need. Correct. On this, these shelves. this is uh, components for a 44 Magnum. Having a variety of tools and equipment in the same place means you can do a variety of jobs and you can keep tabs on what you have. Your inventory of supplies is in plain sight and there's no reason for anything to mysteriously walk away. Everything's within reach of me sitting down here. And that powder goes down there. It just sits on the floor there. Now what are those bins right there? These? Mm -hmm. these, are, these are tools that I use. There's all kinds of tools. There's pliers and screwdrivers and files and you name it, it's in there for tools for working on whatever I have to work on in the reloading room, whether it happens to be a gun or a machine. Now, over here, books. <laughs> Holy cow, this is a library too. What? I've used, um, I still use most of those manuals for, this happens to be shot shell and metallic or revolver pistol and rifle. This happens to be pistol revolver only. This is a shot shell manual. This is an old Lyman manual that I still use for some of my recipes. Okay, now. There's, there's some books here I don't even use anymore, but I just keep them here. So this is the way you can do it all in a closet. In a closet, yeah. Now, do you have to be a carpenter to do this? No. Anybody that has a little knowledge of woodworking can do it. Mm-hmm. No, it, I think my work as a carpenter has helped me categorize things here and get everything in a neat way that I could still have reach with everything. It gets, it's so compact in here and I, you know, I didn't have any choice. John DePoit may have built his workshop in a closet because it was convenient, but to me, it looks like the ideal setup. But what if you don't have a closet? I mean, we don't have one here in the Practical Sportsman cabin, so I got the idea, why don't we build one? It'll be easy, inexpensive, and much better than just working on a tabletop. Next week, we're going to decide how we're going to lay it out, and we're going to start construction right here. I think it'll be about six feet wide. We're going to have shelves that run up like this. 